Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the Lord's house in the name of Jesus Christ, our risen Savior. And we continue to rejoice in the fact that our God is not dead, but alive and well and governing all things in the sake of his people. Today is known as the third Sunday of Easter. And today we'll reflect upon the gospel lesson. And as we do so, the point of emphasis today is this. We have been made eternally rich with the gospel of Jesus Christ, with the word he has taught, with the sacraments we've received. And the Lord says, what are you doing with it? Are you keeping it to yourselves? You know, I, I, I don't know if I'll mention the second service because I always change my sermon a little bit, but at the, at the service last Tuesday for uh, Heather's uh, father, a very touching message as this pastor was able to bring to Heather's dad the gospel message before he passed away and he was baptized. What a meaningful service that man was. What if that pastor had not shared it? What would there have been to celebrate? So today we come and we, the Lord lays us on us, not heavily, but with encouragement to go and make disciples of all people. God, enrich us with his grace that we may go forth with his grace and bring it to others. We join in singing the first hymn, 480.
beginning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise, and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar. Let us first consider our unworthiness, and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. We kneel. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a call and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We are seated to sing him 816. Through the humiliation of your Son, you raised up the fallen world. 
Grant to your faithful people rescues from the peril of everlasting death, perpetual gladness and eternal joys. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The first reading for the third Sunday of Easter is from Acts chapter 3. While the lame man, who was now healed, clung to Peter and John, all the people ran together to them and the portico called Solomon's, astounded. And when Peter saw it, he addressed the people, Men of Israel, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us as though by our own power or piety we have made him walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers, glorified his servant Jesus, whom you delivered over and denied in the presence of Pilate when he had decided to release him. But you denied the Holy and Righteous One, and asked for a murderer to be granted to you. And you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses. And his name, by faith in his name, has made this man strong, whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given the man this perfect health in the presence of you all. And now, brothers, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. But what God foretold by the mouth of all the prophets, that his Christ would suffer, he thus fulfilled. Repent, therefore, and turn again, that your sins may be blotted out, that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord, and that he may send the Christ appointed for you, Jesus, whom heaven must receive, until the time for restoring all things about which God spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets long ago. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, God. why the world does not know us is that it did not know him. 
Beloved, we are God's children now, and what we will be has not yet appeared. But we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, because we shall see him as he is. And everyone who thus hopes in him purifies himself as he is pure. Everyone who makes a practice of sinning also practices lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he appeared to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him keeps on sinning. No one who keeps on sinning has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Whoever practices righteousness is righteous, as he is righteous. This is the word of the Lord. Please turn to the Alleluia in your bulletin. The congregation will sing the Alleluia after the choir sings it and after the choir sings the verse. Please rise.
Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Sanctify us with the truth, for thy word is truth. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Your brothers and sisters in Christ, today we look at the Gospel lesson. And I recall a professor, and maybe I've mentioned this to some of you before, I recall a professor at the seminary, a Dr. Henry Eggle, loved the guy. Sound, very applicable, pastoral. One day he came into our homiletics class and he said, Gentlemen, I want you to understand something. You can preach the most biblically based, doctrinally sound sermon. But at the end of it, if people say, so what? You've wasted their time and you should never have stepped in the pulpit. Well, I am so thankful that the so what of our text today is very obvious. It's very obvious because at the end of today's reading, Jesus clearly states, you are my witnesses of these things. Now what things is Jesus speaking about? And what does it mean to be a witness to these things? That's what we'll look at this morning as we give attention to this text. Today's gospel begins with the words, as they were talking about these things, now, the things, or the people, the they that is being referred to here is the disciples, of course, the, the eleven disciples, and it's believed probably some of the women that had been at the tomb, along with the Emmaus disciples. And they were talking about everything that had been witnessed and said in that resurrection day. But they we're afraid. It's interesting in our text how it says, after Jesus said, peace to you, and they said, they were startled and frightened and thought they saw a spirit. They didn't get it. After a while, it goes on and says, they still disbelieved for joy and were marveling. Isn't that interesting? They still disbelieved, but they had joy and they were marveling. They were a confused people. They didn't know what to make of what had taken place. They knew for certain they were afraid of the Jews because the Jews might think they had been tampering with stuff. And so they hid behind closed, locked doors. Now, in the midst of that situation, Jesus comes in. I can envision a little smile on his face, and he says, Peace be with you. Oh, the peace he had to offer them. But as we noted, it didn't calm their fears. It almost seemed to confuse matters more. Well, that's the Jesus we've been following. But what's he doing here? How can this be? Is it really him in the flesh? And all of these things still were confusing them. They lived in fear because they had trouble believing that Jesus had risen from the dead. Now let's think about that for a moment. They had trouble because they had trouble believing, they were fearing because they had trouble believing Jesus had risen from the dead. Does that remind you of anyone you might know? How often have you and I lived as if Jesus were risen? How often have we let some sin weigh us down so heavily? We can't forgive ourselves. We, we know how we hurt someone and we, we're just struggling with this concept of forgiveness. And we live as if the resurrection of Jesus, which proclaimed pardon and peace, didn't really happen. Or how often have we valued the things of the flesh more 
than the things of the Spirit of God. And as we go through our living, we worry, we doubt, and it's as if the Lord has not risen. Or take this reality, because many, many of us know the great, rich blessings of Jesus, love, forgiveness, and the certainty of eternal life. But how often do we hide it in the walls of the sanctuary? How often do we take this eternal message that can save all people and really be active in witnessing and word and deed to the people of the world that this darkness they are in can be dispelled by the saving light of Jesus Christ? As Jesus is found coming to the disciples in our text, he also comes to you and me, and he says, Peace be with you. Why are you troubled? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? See my hands and my feet, that it is I myself touch me, and see. Well, isn't it interesting that today, Jesus comes to us through bread and wine with his very body and blood, and he says to us, touch me. See me through the eyes of faith. Taste of my saving grace in this meal. Jesus made payment for our sins. He died and rose again that we might have life in his name. And he now comes to us as the resurrected Savior in the supper. To say, see, it is I and not another. The Lord says, come, behold the Lamb of God who has taken away the sins of the world. Now what's interesting, after he showed himself to the disciples by eating some fish and some bread, it says, then he spoke to him, to them, the word of God. It says that he should taught how the law of the prophets, the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms spoke of Jesus. Jesus turned back to the word of God. He says to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Jesus was talking to them. He was sharing his word. He said, it's all in there, guys. The whole story, my whole revelation, the fulfillment of all the prophecies, I am the one. And it starts right out in Genesis when God said, I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed. He will crush your head and you will bruise his heel. God, the Father, the Messiah, the Savior, came. He will crush your head. That's what the Messiah did, didn't he? He defeated Satan once and for all. But in the process of doing that, he had a bruised heel, wounded, suffering, pain, sorrow, death. I've really come to appreciate this passage because years ago as a runner, I had a bruised heel. And I went from running a four and a half minute mile to barely able to run an eight minute mile. I could not put any pressure on my foot because of a bruised heel. It reminds me of this text. He was bruised that Satan would be crushed. And the Lord says, I reveal it to you again and again in the pages of scripture. In the Psalms, we looked at the Psalm, Psalm 41, remember during the midweek Lent services, where we, were, where we were reminded, he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities. He made payment for our sins through his crucifixion. And the proof of it all being paid for is found as Jesus fulfilled the prophecy, destroy this temple, and in three
three days, I will raise it up. Two weeks ago today, and I wasn't here for the second service, I was back at St. Paul's, but it was packed here. Totally packed. One of two Sunday, or two uh, seasonal events in the church here, people packed the church, Christmas, or candlelight service, and Easter. But how suddenly we forget. And we live as almost he hadn't risen at all two weeks ago. We say hallelujahs for the first time in over six weeks, praising God for the redemption of our bodies and souls through the blood he poured out on the cross of Calvary. The Lord assures us that he lives and reigns and that whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. So as with the disciples of old, our text tells us that our minds too got opened by God. All of a sudden, we can see the reality of our salvation through Jesus Christ by the eyes of faith. And so we can celebrate. We can celebrate as took place last Tuesday here with the funeral. We can celebrate one redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, taken to eternal glory. Last Tuesday, when you were when we were here for that worship service, they had they sang that one hymn that was the final hymn at my wife's funeral. When we recessed up, and the last words of that hymn were, "Jesus is our confidence." Go on into the world. Jesus is our confidence. Nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. And it is only through the name of Jesus that anyone can be saved. And so, at the end of our text, the Lord talks to us, you are witnesses of these things. What is a witness? A witness in a court of law is one who tells the truth as he knows it, so that others may know the truth as well. Through the eyes of faith we have come to know Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, and that no one comes to the Father but by him. We are witnesses to that, and as witnesses we are to make sure now that the repentance and forgiveness of sins is proclaimed in his name to all nations. That's our calling. That's our major God-given purpose for being here. <laughs> we had a member at St. Paul once who said, uh, my job on, my, my real task on earth is to share the gospel with everybody else. The job I have just pays for me to get that job done so I can eat and drink. We are called to declare the praises of him who calls us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Being used by God to share his truth, however, can be a scary thing, Captain. Are we always open and bold in sharing with someone else, or are we afraid of what might happen if we do? <coughs> I remember a number of years ago, a member at St. Paul's, uh, it was a do uh, daughter-in-law, said, uh, my father-in-law is dying of cancer. Can you go see him? That's all she asked. And, well, no big problem. I went there, knocked on the door, and I said, uh, I'm from St. Paul. I'm a pastor from St. Paul's Lutheran Church, and I'd like to talk to you. Talk about getting scared. The guy said to me, if you want to talk about God, you're not welcome in this house. I said, okay, I promise not to talk about God. For two weeks, three, three times a week, I'd go in and we'd just visit and share stuff. He liked to read and was a Cubs fan, whatever, you know, all that stuff. And then one day, I went and visited and I, I used his nickname and I said, now, I'd like to share Jesus with you today. Now, if you don't want me to, 
stop me and I won't. He let me share. Five and a half months after the scary event, he confessed his faith in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And two weeks after that, he was taken to glory to be with his Savior forever. Now, we have scary things. We get scared about sharing. Am I going to say the right thing? Am I going to do the right thing? Is this person going to receive me properly? we got all the that I'm not going to list at all. You know what they are. What I want us to look at today is why we don't have to be afraid. It's in this text. <clears throat> at the last verse of our text, Jesus promises his disciples, including you and me, I will send my Holy Spirit upon you that you may have the power to proclaim my name. Now just think about that for a moment in light of what we read in that first lesson this morning. <clears throat> remember the major character with Peter and John? You remember that, Peter? You remember him a few weeks before the events of Pentecost? Remember him when he told Jesus, I will suffer all, even death, rather than fall away? And then one of the next words out of his mouth was, I don't know a man. And all the disciples withered away. They were secluded spiritually from bringing the truths of God to the world. But then Pentecost came. And as the disciples waited in Jerusalem, the Lord poured out the Holy Spirit upon those disciples. And what is the Peter we see in our reading today? He's confronting the very Jews that had him crucified. And he says to them, you guys killed the author of life. His death is on your shoulders. And he calls them to repentance that they may receive the forgiveness of sins and eternal life in Jesus Christ our Lord. By the power of the Holy Spirit, all of those disciples became bold people. And literally, most of them suffered death for the sake of proclaiming the good news of Jesus Christ. And as a result, you and I know the Savior today. We have the forgiveness of sins and everlasting life through His name. Now, we need to realize Jesus has instilled His Holy Spirit upon us. Through water and the Word, we have been born again. Of water and the Spirit, and we are new people. We have been connected to the very death and resurrection of Jesus Christ and been given new life. You and I now see that this life, we are but strangers here. Heaven is our home. Glorious encounter I have with one lady. She was, I used to go in and sing some hymns sometimes to patients in the hospital. And this lady was near death. She actually died after I left, uh, before the next morning. But we were saying, I'm but a stranger here. My Heaven is my home. And she was so weak. She mouthed the words, but I could always hear her say, Heaven is my home. Heaven is my home. Wow, what a funeral to celebrate. She was in home in heaven with Jesus. And that's the precious gift we have. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, the Lord says, As I, I have poured out my Spirit upon you in holy baptism, I have empowered you. Now, so that I will give you the very words to speak, that you may share the truth and be the witnesses I have called you to be. Brothers and sisters, we are a privileged people. We get to carry the name of Jesus outside these four walls. Hopefully, we will not be like the disciples before Pentecost and cuddle up in the sanctuary to be safe. But hopefully touched by the grace of God in Jesus Christ and the certainty 
that anyone who believes in him has everlasting life, we will go forth and bring the testimony of Christ and the truth of his salvation to others. We conclude with a literal translation of a very familiar verse. As you are going, make disciples of all nations by baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost and by teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And then comes the power. And behold, I am with you always to the very end of the age. Amen. Now may the peace of God which surpasses all human understanding keep our hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus and a life everlasting. Amen. Please rise as we profess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten as Father before all the worlds, God of God, light, light of light, very God of very God, begotten and not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again in glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified who spoke by the prophets, and I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please kneel for the prayers of the church. Almighty God, we give thanks for all your goodness and bless you for the love that sustains us from day to day. We praise you for the gift of your Son, our Savior, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. We thank you for the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, for your Holy Church, for the means of grace, for the lives of all faithful and just people, and for the hope of the life to come. Help us to, help us to treasure in our hearts all that you have done for us and enable us to show our thankfulness in lives that are wholly given to your service. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Send the light of your truth into all the earth. Raise up faithful servants of Christ to advance the gospel both at home and in distant lands. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Preserve our nation in justice and honor, that we may lead a peaceable life with integrity. Grant health and favor to all who bear office in our land, especially the President and Congress of the United States, the Governor and Legislator of this state, and to all who make, administer, and judge our laws. Help them to serve this people according to your holy will. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Sanctify our homes with your presence and bless them with joy. Keep our children in the covenant of their baptism and enable their parents to bring them up in lives of faith and devotion. Unite the members of all families in a spirit of affection and service, that they may show your praise in our land and in all the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. By your word and Holy Spirit, comfort all who are in sorrow or need, sickness or adversity. We especially ask that you would be with Doris, Dawn, John, Stephanie, Maria, Kelly, Harold, Shirley, Curtis, Mel, Jerry, Maribel, Torin, Isla, Donnie, Bev, Jesus, Diane, Tim, and Rhonda. 
be with those who suffer persecution for the faith. Have mercy on those to whom death draws near. Bring consolation to those in sorrow. And grant to all a measure of your love, taking them into your tender care. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things and whatever else you know that we need, grant us, Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again, and now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please rise. Our service continues to the gathering of offering. You may be seated.
Grant that we may receive the bread and wine that is his body and blood as a gift, guarantee and pledge of his salvation. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor and worship, with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, at his command and with his own words, we now receive his sacrament. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. We rise. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us to the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. You may be seated. I'll tell you with these glasses, I gotta make sure I'm all the steps. All right. You're an old person, you can laugh with me. Okay. <laughs> first of all, three announcements. First of all, uh, Thursday morning Bible study will begin this week at 9 a.m. Uh, studying the book of Jacob, Pastor Almeyer will be leading that. Secondly, uh, you may begin bringing your items for the trash and treasure sale next Sunday, April 21st, after the second service. We need all hands on deck to help bring things down from upstairs. So, if you have an able body and a willing spirit, God bless you and use it. Uh, today, after the second service, we'll be having a light lunch, and then uh, we're going to go Easter Christmas. Uh, yeah, Easter Christmas caroling. We did this last year. We had a lot of fun, and uh, we got tired, but we had a lot of fun. And so, all are welcome to join. Uh, we pray now that the richness of God's grace in Jesus Christ may truly abide in your hearts, in your lives, and shine forth in all you do and all you say. That the name of Christ may be glorified, and people will know him as you do. We continue now by singing the last hymn, hymn 680. <clears throat> 